Hi guys, it's time for a story time with Nina. I have a special Halloween edition for you today, and we are actually going to be reading a couple of stories, which um, I really like both of these. The first one is Pooh Trick or Treat, and the second one we're going to read is Room on the Broom. And if you are, uh, if you have a Netflix subscription, I found Room on the Broom on Netflix. It was fun to watch that with my granddaughter. So let's get started, shall we? Because we have to get through two stories. This first one is Pooh, Trick or Treat. Do you like Winnie the Pooh? He's a longtime favorite. It was Halloween and Pooh and Piglet were busy carving jack-o'-lanterns. Have you carved yours yet? I have it. I'm not going trick or treating this year, Pooh announced Piglet. I'm too scared. What is there to be afraid of, asked Pooh. We'll only be seeing our friends. Well, what if a costume has a heffalump hiding under it instead of a friend, asked Piglet. Get him working on his jack-o'-lanterns. There's Piglet hiding. He's so scared. Why, I'll be with you, Piglet, replied Pooh. Look, he said, pointing to a book he'd been reading. I've thought of a costume we can wear together. We'll go trick-or-treating dressed as a totem pole. All right, sighed Piglet as Pooh got together the pieces of the costume. I'll go, but only if you promise to run if you see a heffalump. I promise, said Pooh. He lifted Piglet onto his shoulders and arranged the costume so they would be a totem pole with two faces. There's the start of the costume. The two of them headed for Rabbit's house. Oh dear, Piglet whispered as they passed Rabbit's garden. Something's hiding in the corn stalks. Don't worry, replied Pooh. That's just a scarecrow, not a scare piglet. There they are, dressed up as the totem pole. There's that scarecrow, not a scare piglet. Pooh and Piglet hurried up to Rabbit's door. Happy Halloween, Pooh cried, trick or treat. No one answered. Oh, bother, said Pooh. Rabbit's not home. Next, Pooh and Piglet went to Kanga's house. Pooh knocked on the door and cried, Happy Halloween! Trick or treat! Again, no answer. Oh, bother, said Pooh. Kanga's not home either. They're knocking and knocking. Nobody's coming to the door. As Pooh and Piglet headed down the path, a white figure flew toward them, shrieking, Ooh, ouch, ooh! Pooh, cried Piglet, it's a ghost, run! Holding tightly to Piglet, Pooh ran as fast as he could. He dashed behind a tree and peeked out at the ghost. Whoa, look at that. They are scared. Let's see what happens next. The white thing thrashed around for a few minutes. Then suddenly it untangled itself. Tigger, Pooh exclaimed. Tigger frowned. Who are you? He asked. And what are you? It's me, said Pooh. And me, added Piglet. We're a totem pole. Good. Poor Tigger. Poor Tigger. Tigger scratched his head. He'd never seen a totem pole before, but he was very pleased when Pooh invited him to go trick-or-treating. You can dress up as a ghost, Pooh suggested, but if you see a heffalump anywhere, you must promise to tell us, Piglet insisted. And there's confused Tigger and happy Tigger because he's going to go be a ghost. The friends hurried on to Eeyore's place. As they approached, they saw that his little twig house was covered with cobwebs. Ooh, huge spiders, said Piglet, shivering. Don't go any closer. Then out of the shadows, a voice called, and why not? I have a lump, cried Pooh. Where? yelled Tigger. Run, squeaked Piglet. Oh, look at all those cobwebs. Yay, yay. I do not like the cobwebs myself. Oh, well, said Eeyore, peering around the corner. No one ever sticks around, naturally. Not even the spiders who made these cobwebs. When he recognized Eeyore's voice, Pooh stopped. We came to see you, he said. Would you like to come trick-or-treating with us? Poor Eeyore. 
I wonder if he'll say yes. Let's find out. Can't, Eeyore said gloomily. Don't have a costume. Hmm, said Pooh. Well, if you rolled around in those cobwebs, you would look just like a mummy, Tigger said. Here, buddy boy, let me help you. When Eeyore was ready, the whole gang headed down the path. Suddenly, four strange shapes ran out of the trees. Heffalumps, shouted Tigger. Run, cried Piglet. Oh, look at, they're rolling them around, getting them all full of those spider webs. Oh, there's the four strangers. Do you know who they are? I'll bet you do. Then the smallest shape squealed. Look, Mama, we scared them. Pooh halted in his tracks. Roo, he said. The four strange shapes removed their masks, and there were Roo, Kanga, Rabbit, and Owl. We tricked them, Mama. We tricked them, Roo squeaked happily. Yes, dear, Kanga replied. Now let them catch their breath. And then we can all go to Owl's house for some treats. Oh, look at, they're all friends. The scare is over. Well, Piglet, what did I tell you, Pooh said as the friends walked toward Owl's house. There was nothing to be afraid of. All we've seen are our friends this Halloween. I'm glad, Pooh, Piglet said. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you too, Piglet, Pooh replied. And there they go all off together to go have some treats. Did you like that story? I liked it. We dropped our room on the broom. Book, room on the broom. I like this story. Uh, it's a little long, but stick with me. The artwork is great. And like I said, you can see this one on Netflix if you really like the story. And this book is by Julia Donaldson with pictures by Axel Scheffler. Hmm. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly, it blew off the hat. Look at her, they're on their broom. There's her ginger braid. You know what color ginger is? Ginger is red. She lost her hat though. Uh-oh. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head, I'm a dog, as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. There they are looking for the hat, and there's that dog. The dog gives her back the hat, and then he says, I want to go too. So on he gets. Let's see what happens next. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud but held on to her hat. But away blew the bow. The ugh, Away blew the bow from her braid. Just like that. Sometimes we make boo-boos when we're reading. Look at them all. Oh, there's the bow. See it? Yellow with polka dots. And the dog says, oh no, I can't get it. There it goes. There it goes. Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied her braid in the bow, I am a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. There she is, they're searching high and low. There's the green bird, found the bow. Isn't that fun? 
Over the reeds and the rivers they flew. The birds shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Oh boy, there it goes. See her, she's got her hand on her bow. She doesn't want to lose her bow again. She's picking up all these passengers. There's the wand falling. Let's see what happens next. Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak, I am a frog, as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy. You're gonna have to turn the page. The frog jumped for joy. <gasps> the broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. Ooh, this is getting good. Uh-oh, they all fell off. She's on one part, they're on the other part. Oh, goodness. Well, I am a dragon as mean as can be, and which with French fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, just this once, I'll have witch without fries. So there's the scary dragon chasing the witch. And then he kind of gets her cornered, doesn't he? Scary, scary, kind of scary. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered, and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, with a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, buzz off, that's my witch. There it is, there's that crazy creature. Do you know what that creature is? Can you see it? Can you guess what that is? Or do you already know? Look at the poor dragon. He doesn't know what to do. The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he spluttered, I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Yeah, there they all are. They're all jumping off, going back to normal. She's so happy, look at her. She's so happy to have her friends with her. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom. What do you think happens next? What do you think she's making? Do you see them all helping her? Oh, look at that magical cauldron she's got. Then out rose a truly magnificent broom with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Oh, my goodness. 
I'm telling you, they are flying in style. Do you see this? Look at that awesome broom. Everybody's together and they all have their own place. And if it got windy and she lost her hat and her bow and her wand and her broom, she got them all back, didn't she? And at the end of the day, everybody's happy. I hope you're happy too. Thanks for joining me and let's check in together again next week when we have another story time with Nina.